I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Oops! The Podcast. I'm Julio, sitting here with my old pal, Francis. Old pal. How you doing, dude? Man, I'm good. I'm good. All is well with me. No complaints. <laughs> Dudes, so I went to, uh, I had a physical this morning and Hill Dog also had a doctor's appointment and I was walking by where I thought her appointment might be and she goes, I'm here. And I was literally where she was. It's as if I had followed her. Same office? No. So she, I was walking to mine, but her, I walked near hers and she was in the Starbucks that I was walking by when she texted me. Oh, that's weird. And, oh, funny. Funny you say that. I'm here too. Mm. It was like, it's, it was almost sus. And whatever happened, whenever I'm wearing a colorful outfit like I am today, I have this kind of bright blue hoodie. I have these, these like green bird dogs on. And she goes, oh, anytime she like doesn't approve of that, she'll comment on the color scheme. She just goes, oh, look at you, the blue and green boy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it. So I just feel like a fucking, I don't know what I feel like, but too colorful, I guess. Julia's wearing the limited edition alternate side parking Thursday rope hat. Yes, I am. Those flew off the shelves. And I don't know. They also it also flew off my head in the middle of the fucking Pacific Ocean. That's I right. then retrieved it. You got I it was, back. I was allowed to go off of the path in the sort of eco preserved Galapagos. They allowed me to run and reach my hand into the ocean where I was able to yeah, retrieve. Yeah, better it. on your head than in the gullet of some pelican. <laughs> and I gotta be honest, dude, the salt water really did it well. I feel like it has the nice little kind of like worn look now. Mm. And I really like this hat. That's, that hat has been some places. It's a good hat. Well, um, there are a number of things I want to bring to your attention. Love it. I love it. So the first is, for whatever reason, I've been riding the subway more lately. Than, it, than usual? Did I say this last time? So it's increased even from last time. <laughs> It's up, it's up a lot. I, I'm on the subway a lot now. And the homeless... Did I talk about the homeless people on the subway? Uh, like, like getting in for free? No, this is a different issue. Uh -huh. On the actual train. Okay. Uh, it's the most I've ever seen um, in terms of, of homeless people on the train. Not making a judgment here. You know, take that as you will. That's just a fact. I've never seen... It. I was on... Going into the city at 8.30 in the morning. So, mm -hmm. you know, rush hour. In people theory. commuting Was in. it busy? Yeah, busy. Cool. And on a, on a subway car, uh, on, the, on the ones that are like modern, the blue ones, not, mm -hmm. the, not the R line. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, you've got six benches. Okay? So there's one on the left side of the car, there's one in the middle, and then there's one on the right. On Two on sides. each side. Yeah. Three of the six benches had a homeless person sleeping horizontally full out. oh god prone that's so frustrating prone bone prone so boning the bench very frustrating three of the six that is if you figure it's four people per bench right or it's i mean it's it's, it's more. more um i mean you're talking about displacing the seats of many many people I don't know, 18 25 people that have paid for their rides it's rare to see even more than one horizontal person it really is so this this was a lot now am i allowed to gently shake the foot of one of these sleeping homeless people and say would you mind if i sit down so maybe, but I got to be honest, there's a, there's a high risk associated with waking the dragon. So Is that right? Do you I mean, think so? Dude, some of these guys and, and, and women too, they, they can be very hostile. Like there's been times where like I've gotten harassed. There's the one guy, there's one guy who doesn't talk. He just goes, brr, brr, and he gets in your face. I've seen him get in people's faces. It's to the point where like one time he got in my face and he had done it a number of times. I've seen this guy over the years, many times. And I was like, I promised myself that if he does that to me again, I'm going to knock him out. I was like, if this guy gets in my face again, dude, I'm going to punch him in the fucking face. I have this, I have this vision too. And like, there, it's appropriate. Like the, the way, the reason why, not to sound like a monster, but like 
we allow that to happen because we're like, ah, that guy's life sucks. We'll let him have this one. And, you know, it gets to the point where it's like, how much can you tolerate? If these people aren't in my face, even if they smell like shit, I'm not that bothered by it. But it's like when you start getting antagonized by people, it's oh, not you're cool. worried. They're you're, like dangerous. It's yeah. dangerous. If the person were not homeless, you'd have the same feeling. If totally, the person yeah. were dressed in normal clothes, were getting in your face and doing that on the subway, you'd feel oh, yeah. like you it's, need to defend yourself. Absolutely. It's a different, it's a totally different, yeah. Absolutely. So I don't know. I've only seen one time in my life someone wake up one of those sleeping people on the bench and make them move. And I still to this day think of the person who did it as a hero. <laughs> what what happened? I mean, it was like <laughs> a guy in, you know, work boots and mm. probably a construction worker or you know, some, I don't know, some, a man. He looked like he was going to build something. He was wearing like Carhartt pants that were right. faded. He had tools. He, he, you know, I, 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 I had yeah, I can't even remember. Just a, just a hardened guy yeah. who was not going to take this. Yes. Not take someone lying down, lying down. <laughs> <laughs> and he just did the most normal human thing, which is that he like went over and sort of gently shook the guy's foot. foot and the guy woke up like, what? You know who who dareth? Oh God! Waken me from my deserved slumber, and the guy just went. Can you go like that? And the guy like, all right, pulled his feet in, and the guy sat down. Wow! And I still think back, and I'm like, why is that not allowed? So again, what's wrong with that? So that's the way that's supposed to happen. Do agreed? No, it's possible that these people went to sleep. On the subway at like one in the morning, and they're not aware that it's nine a.m. Right? They right. might not know it's that possible. it's rush hour, and just gently being like, "Hey, sorry, a hundred people are trying to sit down. The night's over. You've slept enough. Right? It, you know, can you move? And they might. So the, there's just there's potential complications. First of all. You know, sometimes these people, they're not even, they don't even have like shoes on. So if you're touching their foot, you're touching their actual foot. Do you want to just touch someone? No, I wouldn't. You know what I mean? I wouldn't do that. It can become like, I don't want to touch the person most likely, you know, and not like, they're not all gross, but some of them are disgusting. Like they've mm -hmm. like shit their pants. Like there's like, yeah. And like it smell like, you know what I mean? So that's yeah. the other thing. You don't want to sit next to them because they may have recently yeah. peed or shit themselves. Of course. Of course. I am not. <laughs> Unfortunately. I'm not. I'm not waking up. You know, if you are sleeping in your own fluids, sleep away. Uh, I'll let I'll let them have that one. <laughs> you know, for sure. I, Dude, I mean, I, one, I get it. You know, if we're all yeah, we we've all been so sleep that we've pissed the bed, and <laughs> never in my life have I been in that situation and been like. <laughs> Oh, you're waking me up? Yes, you're right. <laughs> I should move over a little in this soiled bed. <laughs> you know? I yeah, get that. Good. I get that. <laughs> Ryan is fucking TKO'd in the corner, dude. I love it. Oh, Bro, man. That's so funny. I mean, yeah, dude, it's, it, <laughs> it's very frustrating. It's very frustrating. And there's something annoying about, you know, I, I, you know I'm not going to sh fucking shit on a person who's down on their luck. You know what I mean? But like, People who are ass, you're an asshole. You're an asshole. Period. It does it. Being an asshole transcends sort of your state in society, yeah, or your contribution to society. You don't need to be an asshole. Don't be mad at me that I don't happen to have a quarter, dude. I'm sorry. I wasn't anticipating running into you today. Yeah. You know how many times have you gotten that? Ah, like fuck off, dude. Well, well the, the correct response should be, "Do you have Venmo?" <laughs> and then they'll be like, "What Venmo? You right no." Now. And then you're like, well, then I can't help you, but I was willing. I'm willing I'm to willing give you money. You. I just need you to modernize. <laughs> I'm willing. To Nobody carries that. cash anymore. It's worthless. It's a tough hustle. That's a tough hustle. Yeah. Now, okay. Listen, I I pitched that to you, knowing that knowing that it's not the right thing to do. I don't think it's, I, this is the thing. It is the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do, but nobody's going to do it but because it's not it's, worth we it. all fear the unknown. It's not worth it. Because it's there are so it. many people 
standing looking at the fact that one person is sleeping knowing we could all be sitting if one person were willing to to mention this i know, I know. and and by the way we're not even taking that guy's seat he just needs to sit instead of sleep right, right. fully stretched right. or god forbid curl your legs in and give us two seats totally somehow give us something nobody has ever slept more comfortably than the people that are sleeping on the subway they are stretched to the max. It's wild. Their spines are elongating due to the motion of the train. <laughs> Whatever it is. But, you know, if I had never seen that guy wake that guy up, I probably would never have thought of this. <laughs> How long ago did that happen? I don't know. But it was one of the great a while ago. <laughs> it was one of the great moments of my New York tenure. <laughs> I was like, it, it's that simple? <laughs> You just need to be a rugged guy and do the polite thing. I don't know. That's crazy. Dude, it's crazy. So. Yeah, like all that says to me, it's like if you're willing to live, out, to live outside, if you're willing to make the world your home like that. They're you can, not living outside. They're living on the train. In pu living in public. <laughs> <laughs> If you're willing to live in public, you really can get away with a lot, dude. It's look, just a big ask. Look, again, unfortunately, I, I'm I'm with you and I'm like, all right, this is where we're <laughs> supposed to say we're not we feel bad for you know homeless people and this is uh it's not as simple as the their whatever, all that stuff. We're oops the podcast, we try to be thoughtful, of course. I am focusing on a very narrow issue, which is just how do you get someone to not sleep full out on the subway? And yes, I do. I would also argue like, how do we stop people from shitting their pants and hanging out with us? <laughs> <laughs> how can we prevent that? I would like to prevent that. You know, <laughs> like, clearly there's something wrong with the guy who's you think doing that. You think that's the, <laughs> the, the thing we need to tackle first? No, no. I think that's next. I think first. That's we, after. The sleeping is a more solvable sleeping problem. Sleeping seems more solvable. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. going to, I want to tackle on, on an, <laughs> on an order of easily solved. <laughs> you know, I'm a guy who on Saturday has a to-do list and I'm going for the yeah. easiest ones first because you build that momentum. Totally. By tackling your smaller tasks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Very, very good. Now here, here's another thing I'm going to throw your way. Okay. Totally different. <laughs> totally, total change of pace. A little left turn here. This is something I was thinking about. It's interesting to me that we go from in life, in dating, uh, from meeting the other person's parents being almost like a prerequisite to hanging out to meeting the parents becoming the like the last thing that happens when you hang out meaning in in the trajectory of age like so when think, you're so 16 correct you have to meet the parents dude when i was 16 i met the parents of every single girl that yeah. i was hananging out with same and instantly I, yeah and you was guys the first thing that happened you guys remember my story where i was caught because i happened to be in the local newspaper for some tennis thing the time where i didn't meet them it was a big deal is my point. She lied and said she was hanging out with another guy because they hadn't yet met. Yeah, him. right. Right. Not, you know, but anyway, like you, uh, it's, you, it's a prerequisite. Hi, you go into the kitchen. Hi, Mrs. So-and-so. Hi, Mr. So-and-so. Nice to see you. All is well. Uh, yep, soccer's going great. Yada, yada. Okay, we're going to go watch a movie. Bye. Yeah, I'll have her back. Bye. Or no, but like you go, you know, you go to the basement. Of oh, their oh house. right, 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 right. You're at their house. Right, right, right. You sit on opposite ends of the couch. Sure. Or a date, <laughs> or a date. You know, Whatever. you're, you're yeah, meeting yeah. the parents every time. Every time. As a way of hanging out one on one with the with the lady. It's how you get the permission. And then you get to a point in life where all of a sudden it's like months. Yeah. Until I think we're ready to introduce you to my parents. Right. Or, you know what I mean? It becomes, if you were to do it prematurely, it's like extra. Yeah. Like he's being a little extra. Yeah, people get freaked out if you're like, I'd like to meet your parents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that a funny, weird thing? It is weird. Thing? I think it turns on its head like that. And when does it flip? 
I think adulthood. And what's adulthood? Graduate, like being an, being a legal adult. Like when you're 18, that yeah, all of a sudden it turns. So it's it's out of it's out of high school. Yeah, maybe because it, you can be 18 in high school and and you're still meeting. Yeah, parents. And it it, it it even transcends like if you live at your par- with your parents still because like once you've gone away to college and you've lived on your own, when you come back that summer, so the rules have changed. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's when you live with your parents. You have to introduce. Yeah, them. but not not post having gone to college, because like, you come back for that summer. Say you're you're living at home, like many people do. The rules have now changed. You no longer have to be like, "Hey, I'm going here." You don't have to ask permission anymore. Right. You know. Right, and and bringing a lady home from college to introduce to your parents, even freshman year, after freshman year, is a big deal. Definitely. That's a big deal. Definitely. Isn't that fun? It is fun. It's quite fun. <laughs> You know, I, I'm trying to think, I don't even know when this was. I really don't know when this was. I must've been, I don't know, 22 or three or something. And I went home to Maine and I was single and I like got on Tinder, just downloaded it. And I had met a, I had gone to the coffee shop the next town over and seen a somewhat cute girl, uh, barista or whatever. And, you know, smiled at each other. And then I got on Tinder and I, I saw her on Tinder. Wow. And we both what? matched and we immediately started talking. She was like, we were in the coffee shop. Yeah, hey, well, so whatever. Agree to hang out. And we don't know. We don't we don't have anywhere to go. You know, mm. so she like. How old are you at this point? I think I'm 21, 22. Wow. So what do you mean you have nowhere to go? Why? Maybe I'm 24. I, Why would you have nowhere to go? Oh, to like hook up? Yeah, right. it's either at, get a hotel. It's either at our house right. where I'm staying or rent a hotel room, which right. is super shady. Yeah. Um, and so she comes over to hang hang out, and I have to introduce her to my parents. Oh man! And it was like this is weird. Was it funny? But did you guys like think it was funny? I think I think my I think afterwards my parents were like kind of like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> you know what i mean because every girl that i had introduced them to over the last five six years that i had any romantic designs with i was like mom dad i have someone for you to meet and they're like "Ooh, you know excited right. whereas this I, i'm like i have this i have a friend coming over and they're like what yeah right. i'm like this is a random girl we met at the <laughs> coffee shop they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Just, you know? So. Weird. Did you have an area where you could hang out privately at least? We like walked around <laughs> outside. Walked down the road. <laughs> you know? Nice, dude. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty of it, but it was such a strange throwback to high school at an age where I was like, I, I'm paying rent in new yeah, york yeah. like i have complete independence and yet because of where i am i am it's weird. beholden to the old rules totally. of introducing you i can't sneak a, a, a human around my parents house yeah you know so i don't know it's odd it's funny you mentioned that this is not the same thing but this is something that is kind of for some reason feels related as far as like protocol for life things a friend of mine was telling me, he's like, so I was hanging out with his sister and the girl, the guy that, that she's dating. And he's like, and he asked for my permission if I could, that he, he had, in, he was intending to propose. And I'm like, is that a thing? Asking for the siblings. Oh. Is that a thing? I'd never heard of that. And I don't know if he was just like upselling it mm. and saying it as if he had asked where he was just really just telling him. Mm-hmm interesting you don't have to fucking ask the siblings permission do you i i don't know the answer to that i think i mean what i did was i i called her parents and was talking to them and just sort of said like i'm intending to do this i want your blessing they were so so honored to be to be asked that or just to be you know brought into the loop and i was so glad to have done it and then I sort of said, you know, should I, I, I think I'm thinking I'm going to call uh, her stepsisters as well to let them know 
And they were like, that's a great idea. They'd be so honored too. But I had this worry of, of including just that the circle was getting bigger of people that were in the know. And I, mm. I you know, it's so anxiety inducing for the guy to propose that the, the, the tighter you keep that circle. Totally. Because I had told my parents and I had told my sister. And so her husband knew. And all of a sudden you're like, man, so many people know before my fiance wow, knows. It feels terror. like I'm almost sneaking around behind <laughs> right, her right. back, you know. But then it was like once I told the siblings and then I told whatever a, a friend or two, then I like started going on stage and doing bits about it <laughs> and telling audiences like, oh, I'm going to propose soon. Like, blah, blah, blah. I mean, then it became fun. And, you know, the secret was kind of out. But I don't know, man. I think mm. uh, I think asking a sibling is I actually think it's kind of nice. I don't think you have to. Right. It's nice, though. But it's it's nice when the family feels included. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. And I, I also, and you are the one who like kind of brought this to my attention, but the idea that like you don't just ask the father, you ask both parents is a very nice thing, I think. Yeah. But dude, I was, th I was thinking about your uh, engagement party. It was Sierra's birthday party, but your engagement party. Yeah. Um, dude, her stepdad was a bro. He was really like a pure bro. Like <laughs> he was like holding down the kitchen really hard. Yeah, like he really did. Making thing, making sure things like weren't getting fucked up, and like he putting is, in food, and like he was solid. Dude, he's routinely the MVP guest at like just about every event I've ever been. He to. was a very high value add. He's I so much value add. He's so just on the ball. Like puts puts the benefit of the party ahead of his own enjoyment of it. You know, and all of that. And, very paternal just, yeah he's 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 on it dude johnny on the spot is great i love it um okay so speaking of that party mm -hmm. i think i'm gonna have a birthday party i know dude and i i hope that i'm able to to fin uh, to like maneuver my way and right. being you able can't, to come you still. can't even come no that's okay i'm supposed to be in albany we'll see i mean hopefully there's some way that i can figure out a way to attend are you guys soon. around ryan chris March 26th, it's my actual birthday. How many times does your birthday fall on a Saturday? Not often. Not often. Well, Damn, must nice, be nice. Must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, March 26th, my birthday. I'm thinking après ski themed. How does that sound to you guys? Fun. You know, you, you can do it up as much as you want. You don't have to. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. that I, assuming that I... Can figure out a way to come. I just it want. Like I want to be up there dancing. <laughs> want to get the the fire pit going, some heat lamps, wear something sick from Monkler. Yeah. Maybe go buy more stuff from there. Here's something frustrating. I went in there again yesterday. That store is a problem. Did you buy anything? No. But I'm. You want more shit? Well, here's here's the issue, Julio. <laughs> My New York City's a trap. Now that I live in Brooklyn. So I had work from 9 to 11 in New York City. And then I had a doctor's appointment at 2.15 to look at my hand. In, from basketball? Correct. In New York City? Seven in weeks, Manhattan? Seven weeks after the injury, I in, finally went in and Manhattan? saw a doctor. Correct. Yeah. How's the hand? Not as bad as I had thought, as I had feared. How does it feel? Feels okay. That This is the reason I went. It healed. And then it started hurting again. Mm. And then I was like, oh, this healed wrong. Mm. This is bad. This is, that worries me more yeah, than anything. Totally, totally. So they um, have to break it again. Yeah, some, something, <laughs> Sometimes. something bad would Hopefully have not. to happen. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the tendons are all torn. Oh. But the bones didn't, the bone didn't break. And, and, and a lot of the time with fingers, I guess, the, their bone shards will pull away from the tendon. And that, and then float around in your face, and that's where you. That's so bad. That did not happen, though. That didn't happen. Oh, the X-rays were fine. We're clean. And by the way, I don't know what it would take to break my fingers if this did not break them, because the what happened to my hand on that basketball court was pure torture. Yeah. Um. So, anyway, uh, the guy presi prescribed me Pregnizone which is mm -hmm. an anti-inflammatory. And he said, uh, it, you know, it, 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 do you have a hard time sleeping? Because I want you to take a low dosage of this, but four times throughout the day. Um, and it tends to rev people up. Mm. And now I don't want to take it. 
You, are you, you should at least try. I haven't even gone to the pharmacy to pick it up. Wow. I don't like drugs, man. I know. I feel you. I don't like drugs. So, but it'll heal either way. It'll just make it more pleasant. I have this weird. It it it's gonna take the swelling down, and somehow expedite the healing process of the finger. I mean, I hear. I I do hear you. Do you do you just abide by whatever doctors tell you every time you go? Pretty much until like I start feeling like shit from it. If I don't feel any side effects, then I do it. If I feel side effects that I don't like, I either ask them or stop. I think part of the problem is that I've been watching so much euphoria that I'm just terrified of. <laughs> How far pills. are you? I'm still, I'm a couple episodes behind. I now. have two episodes left. Oh, of season th- two. I think we're now caught up. I think we're now on the same page. Cause I think I also still, how many season two episodes are there? Are, eight. Eight, eight, eight total. Season, yeah. I think I have either two or three more. Oh, yeah. Sweet. We're in a good I have spot. Two left. Got pretty crazy, right? I just, it's the best we show. Pump the brakes. We, no, no, no spoilers, nothing. No, of course, wouldn't do that. But my God, what a show. It's, I, it is good. I, I mean, I don't think it's a hot take for me to say I think it's the best TV show I've ever seen. <laughs> like that, Sopra, Sopranos is up there. I, you know, it's good. If right? I went back it's and so watched good. Sopranos again, I would probably say Sopranos and, and maybe Breaking Bad ahead of Euphoria, but I, it's in the conversation. It's elite for sure. It's really in the conversation. Um, I've just it's the most original whatever. We did this last episode. I'm not gonna suck Euphoria's dick for another ten minutes, even though I want to. The many dicks of Euphoria that even you are I want to. And by the way, I will say this. Uh Rue, who's the actress? Zendaya. Won the she won the Emmy for best actress she did? in a drama for season one very deserved in season two she blows her performance in season one out she's of the really water. good yeah it, it she hit a different level she's really good of man. acting where i'm like oh my god i didn't know you had this in you i knew you were great and it was understated in season one but i did not know you had this in you mm. you're this is an oscar performance this is like you're a generational talent she killed it yeah um, she's great dude again i think i said this in the last episode but i want to double down on this thought the heightened drama really works when high school kids are the people in the story yeah because they really but dude when you're that age you really believe that things <laughs> are such a big deal when they're not and it it's more realistic to me yes than when it's that way with adults fine because they do that with adult shows too and you're like Yeah, but I do find myself a lot of the time thinking like, who on earth had a high school experience like this? Who on fucking earth is is? Yeah, yeah, okay. Guns and like you know fucking some of the stuff that happens. You're like, come on. Maybe like the way the story plays out, but like like scene by scene, like the it feels. It feels the drama feels real to me, like the emotion, the like thinking that this stuff matters that much is yeah. a very high school. You know? Yeah. I also find um, Jacob Elordi to be uh, distractingly handsome. The Australian guy. Yeah. Nate. Yeah. He's good. I think he's a, he, he's a little too good looking. Does it bother you? Well, it's just like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> nobody looks like that. <laughs> in high school how old is that guy he's 24 24 he's you six foot up. five he's a big boy so tall he's a big boy um he's impossibly manicured in his face you know zendaya all the other characters are i think a little flawed zendaya they they're not afraid they don't put much makeup on her it doesn't look like you see some skin breakouts stuff like that i find that to be really nice uh in terms of selling me on the grittiness and the realism of the right. show whereas jacob lordy there's not a hair out of place for even a second mm. for he, he's the only ken doll of the show really even for cassie sure. who's supposed to be the hot chick you know she's imperfect she's mm. blubbery and her tears and uh i don't know he is a little like sears catalogy for me does that make sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Little Abercrombie model. Um, yeah. I don't know if you guys heard Chris 
Chris said, here, Chris, repeat that. Doesn't that like play into his character though of him being this like perfect guy, but he does other stuff um, you know, without saying anything? I hear yeah. we I, I I hear I hear both of you, Francis. I get what you're saying, Francis. It's like you want because like these are kids, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what are the odds that this character is like this Adonis, just like the best looking guy in the history yeah. of, of the world? Yeah. Um I, but maybe know, that's what he's supposed to be, to Chris's point. There's a scene, I'm not giving anything away. Just a second. <laughs> of a scene where he's lifting weights in season two and he's doing overhead presses with dumbbells I don't even remember and they're this. like 15 pound dumbbells and I was like <laughs> I got him on this you one you little bitch how much can you I do? knew I knew you weren't strong you string bean little willy boy yeah but dude, he had to do like five takes of that that's probably why that give me a break dude how much if can you're you do? like the type of weights that you you know you'd see a mom walking with down the neighborhood you're looking big dude by the way I mean all right well I appreciate that but you know look he he has a swimmer's body his body yes, he does. is a swimmer's body which is a I love those bodies the sort of long torso. Francis loves that body. I've seen him like our, we were look. We were looking at Dylan Palladino. Yeah, I love that shirtless body. once. And Francis goes, "I love his body, dude. Yeah, his swimmer's body. Swimmer's body. <laughs> long torso, wide shoulders. Um, you know, uh, muscular but not beefy. Right. Um, sort of that very athletic, long, sinewy look. I do love that. Um, and that's Jacob Alordi. That's Nate for sh- to a T. But dude, even like fifty. 15 pounds these dumbbells that he was doing overhead press because it was a scene that was meant to be like he's he's really intense now. yeah, yeah he's yeah. angry he's working out and you're like couldn't they have given him fake 50 pound <laughs> dumbbells 80 whatever it is like he's supposed to be this freak athlete he's a football player yeah he's yeah. on the show he's not a swimmer right it's quarterback yeah and uh i don't know i i, I that gave me that that gave me like ah you like that you like i got one on oh, the, this guy's a bitch this punk <laughs> yeah. dude i why are guys like that like you'd think that that would be the perfect body for a pitcher like long and muscular but not like not like oppressive muscle like you're not like right yeah like a tall lanky guy is that what pitchers are like a lot of the time yeah that makes sense yeah i mean think of tim lincecum yeah, like, dude, I, I literally, I was the biggest baseball fan, and in 2003, I quit cold turkey, and I have not followed baseball Oh, since. okay. Something about, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what happened there, mm-hmm. but. Um, maybe. All right, where were we? This is, uh, I've. Euphoria, Jackness. Pivoted a lot of times. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if I had more on that. There was some. Oh, yeah, birthday party. Oh, I was thinking of doing it as a Euphoria-themed birthday oh, party. That's fun, actually. Yeah, I'd be Fez, bro. I would just show up shaved yeah, head. Yeah, dress as your favorite character or Yo, some amalgamation bro. of them all. You tripping. Yeah, he speaks very slowly. <laughs> Angus Cloud. He's great. Yeah, big fan of him. Um, fun, dude. I was thinking of doing that, but I, I think Apres Ski is more in keeping with the season because it's going to be March 26th, which by the way is a, is not a great time of the year to have your birthday. Why? Well, it's, it's just still cold. The weather is terrible. No. In you March. Mu- you can get lucky, but I find that in New York, you're always looking forward to March and March, like a lot of the time because it's theoretically better than February, but it just doesn't end up panning out that way. Yeah. It ends up being dog shit again. And then in April, you're expecting it to be better and it's still terrible for like, yeah. Till the end of April, right? It's not a weather town, dude. It could, it could, it could go well. I could have a good day. I don't need it to be perfect. That's why the theme, because people are gonna wear coats to an apres ski right. themed thing, um, which and is perfect. If, but I'm worried it's gonna rain. If it rains, we'll just have it inside. Um, no harm, no foul, dude. Yeah. Um. <laughs> okay. Dude. Um, I got something for you. Yeah. If you, I want to, I want to bring something up. Please. So dude, we did, I did a road trip. Uh, as you all know, I love to do. And I got these guys on board for it, which is nice. There's something nice about when it's your road weekend, you sort of get to like make the the plan. Yeah. And then you're like, all right, like this is the plan. You can come or you don't have to come if you don't want. Mm-hmm. And we went through Georgia, uh, through to Panama city beach and the way back went through Alabama. And 
Dude, I gotta say, man, I fucking love the South, dude. Wow. The South is very underrated. I know that anybody from the t- South is that's maybe like annoying to hear me say, but I feel like people from here don't like know about the South that much. Right. Like I don't know that many people who have gone to Alabama. Like I don't know that many people who've been to Alabama. I've never set, I've never set foot in Alabama. Yeah. Alabama is awesome. And you know, it's I it's I feel like people that I know up here don't know that. And I would like them to check it out and see it for themselves. Why is it awesome? It's just a good. Pl- it's a good spot, dude. There's cool stuff to do. There's fun stuff. Everybody's super fucking nice, dude. People in the South are just so nice. I, we've talked about this before. There's something great about encountering friendly people that is underrated. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, you know, rich with culture, and it was just a good time, dude. Like I loved Panama City Beach. It felt a little more like the South than it did feeling like quote the Florida that. New Yorkers are used to going to like Dade County or like Mm -hmm. Miami. It's a completely different vibe. Um, But like super rad and Mm -hmm. like better and nice to catch that different vibe. It's just, it was different than what I had done. It Mm -hmm. was dope. I liked it a lot. Um, Now let me ask you something. When you're in Alabama, how easy is it to find a good coffee shop? Very easy. dude. They've got, you know, the steaming depends bean where you are with where you can go in and say i want an iced oat milk latte with an extra shot of espresso i want a half cap i want one espresso regular and one decaf espresso shot and they're gonna have that they can do okay, that for so you this is what i'll say in the big like in birmingham like in a big city like i'm sure that will be easy to find yeah if you get if you're not it might not be but that's not easy to find outside of like if you're not in this new york city or like a close suburb it's not easy to like where I'm from in Connecticut. It's hard to find that. What you go to you the local out? coffee shop in a, a town that has at least whatever, 5,000, 10,000, 5,000 residents. There's a good chance that they're going to have. All right. If anybody in, in Higginham or Haddam know of a place that has what he just ordered, let me know because I want to go to it because I don't think that we have that in, our, in that town. And that, are they going to have, town has let's simplify it. Are they going to have milk alternatives and how many? Okay, fine. Fair question. Are they only going to have soy milk or will they have soy and almond? I milk? don't know. Th- I don't know the answer to that specifically, but like, I don't know. That's like a specifically Alabama. thing. Like there's been times where I've been in other states. No, of course. You know, but I'm, fine. Fair. I'm just saying Alabama call, you know, any of those states, like, You'll be able to find that milk in the grocery store, but they might not have it at the coffee shop. But I actually also don't fucking know. How far might you have to travel to find oat milk is my question. I don't know. I don't know. You know how there are food deserts in America? Yes. You ever I, heard that term? I, no, but it, I, it, it resonates. I don't know the answer. If you're in one of the big cities, you'll be able to find everything you need. The concept of a food desert really makes me nervous and uncomfortable. I feel you. There are families that that buy their groceries at Seven Eleven that shop, yeah, you know, for their food at like convenience stores. I re- I remember I ordered a milk alternative in Kansas, and the girl told me that she had never poured it before. Interesting. I forget where. I think it was in Wichita. Chris, you got Chris, something? Up? Do you do these like small towns? Do they even like have coffee shops? Like that, that's what I was. Wondering, sometimes yeah. they don't, and like, and if they do, it's probably just a Starbucks, and I assume they'll have that stuff. So yeah, yeah. That's so I, that's, if you have a Starbucks, dude, town yeah. I grew up in does not have a Starbucks. There's yeah. now a Dunkin' Donuts that didn't exist there when I was a kid. And if you want to go to get a more sort of, if you want to get like more options, you have to drive like fifteen or twenty. But like, you know, most of these places are within some sort of like bigger area mm-hmm. where you can get shit done, uh, especially when it's like tighter together. One thing I will say, it's like, you know, a reminder, and I know that this is annoying because this is like a through line, a theme of mine, but like to just assume that this, that Alabama is however way you think it is, is just a ridiculous thing to be doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? No place is black and white. Um, no place is just like that, obviously one way or another way. And I think that, you know, the South is super underrated in that capacity amongst the people that I encounter up here who think things about it. And they're just like, not right at all about it. Um, kind of goes back to our old thing. Like you should be forced to have Thanksgiving with people who are different from you. Mm. You know what I mean? Well, okay. Can I tell you what I picture Alabama being? Yeah. And you tell me if I'm wrong. Okay. I, mean, I picture a lot of fast food chains, um, big stretches of of clusters of you know 
Taco Bell. So and... n- no different than literally any of the other states in the country. There's that they have that everywhere. It's not like more so than you would expect in New Jersey or like. So my question is, you know, how many sort of down home family run restaurants that make how easy is it to, is it to find like a, a diner that has a, a, a an unusual and individual take on a classic Southern dish? I have, I don't know. These are like very specific questions. Like, like if you were, <laughs> they definitely are there though. Like you can get a good fucking awesome Southern New York for sure. And especially like the different, I mean, dude, I don't know. Just we, we drove through so many different parts and I've been one other time and just both times. I just thought it was like really nice. Everybody was just like, everybody that I encountered was just like really sweet in this way where I wanted to like hold old ladies hands and walk them into the fucking gas stations I was at mm-hmm. and shit. I don't know, mm-hmm. whatever. And we just kind of stopped at like historical shit. You know how I, how I roll mm-hmm. for national park stops along the way. Uh, went to the Tuskegee Institute. That's cool. And like where the airmen, the Tuskegee airmen flew in and out of. We went to some random like place where Andrew Jackson slaughtered a bunch of Native Americans, Ooh. which I didn't even know existed. It like is unrelated to any war that I'd ever heard about. Mm. Um, whatever. It was dope. Um, but. You know, in Panama City, very much Panama City Beach very much has the uh, like a similar vibe and similar types of people, mm-hmm. and like everybody was pretty chill. I don't know. Cool, fair enough. Isn't Panama City, by the way, where they a lot of high schools do sort of spring break? So and college too. Yeah, sorry, that's I think that's what I mean. Yeah, yes, and it definitely has that vibe. From what I understand, people say at one point they tried to sort of like shut it down a few years ago, and they were kind of successful. And have since brought it back, but there's still a rule like during a specific period of time, you're not allowed to drink on the beach at all because like it oh. was just getting too wild down yeah. there and people were like dying every year and shit. That's where they have the big fights. What fight? I feel like I always see huge fights on the beach. Like brawls? Yeah. Oh, I believe that. In Panama City. I believe it. Um, we did go to the Coyote Ugly Bar, which mm. is like pretty, that's always like a fun thing to do. Dude. Well, they have those in a every, lot of a lot cities. Of cities. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. but whatever. It was fun. Good night life. Um, all right, dude, I have something that I wanted to tell you about that I thought you think is funny. Good. Um, so when I was a kid, I was trying to figure out a way to cheat on my Spanish tests, uh, because I just didn't feel like fucking studying. And when it's like vocab, when it's a vocab based test, it's actually easier to cheat because if it's just like a very specific things you need to remember, you can refer to some kind of guide mm-hmm. and easily cheat. So I came up with a very, have I talked about this before? I came up with a very specific and what I think is a clever way to cheat. So, you know, when you go to like some golf course, you go to like a a golf tournament and they'll have those pens where like every time you click the pen, a different one of the sponsors pops up in this like little window. I think I know what you mean. On either side of the pen. So it'll be like, boom, raise auto, boom. And when I say boom, I'm clicking the pen. Uh, You know, AJ's Pizza. Dino's Pizza. Oh, I thought you were detonating a nearby building. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. I thought this was a writing utensil for advertising. <laughs> Boom. No, I realized I was pantomiming the, act- the action when most of you guys are just listening to this. That's pretty funny. Okay, so what I would do is I would deconstruct the pen, and I would take the cylinder that had all the sponsors on them, and mm-hmm. I would tape the answers to the tests over them. So every time I click the pen, I would just get a new answer. And it was pretty effective. Way so, to I mean, look, I'm going to say what I so many people have said before, but the effort required to set that up to me seems more arduous than actually memorizing the 10 vocab words. So here's why I don't agree with that, because memorizing the 10 vocab words requires multiple sessions of effort, whereas arranging this pen you do it one time you're done you're good and you don't have to study or worry about it, and you're gonna get a 100 uh, and interesting. also so it's also fusion so like say you even study a little and there's a few things that are tripping you up you want to just go outside and play wiffle ball you fucking grab that pen out of the golf bag take it out put the five words that are tripping you out on it put the pen back together and you're good dude. what do you mean fusion what Okay, so say there's 80 vocab words. You can't possibly put all 80 of them on the pen. Yeah, but what quiz okay, has fine. 80 vocab, vocab, vocab words? words? Yeah. Say, you know, that, that cylinder is limited. You can only put six or seven vocab words on there. Yeah. So you pick the six or seven that are tripping you up. You already know the other 13. 
It's actually a full a foolproof way of studying and cheating. So you're telling me that you are now out playing wiffle ball while looking at a pen that has Spanish vocab words? <laughs> no, you're dude. blending those two activities. No, no, fusion of studying and cheating, not a fusion of wiffle ball. Where did the wiffle ball cheating. come from? I'm saying I prefer to play wiffle ball instead of studying because I've got to be honest. This guy Charlie in the neighborhood would get more home runs per at bat, and I needed to out at bat him to have a prayer. Of having the home run, and the only the way to do that was to make cut down on your studying time Correct. by creating a, a, a James Bond pen Correct. that had six the six hardest vocab words of the twenty. Correct, dude. And yet you still managed to memorize the other fourteen, no problem. Yes, and I needed some insurance. I mean, <laughs> I I don't. I guess I can't argue with that. I I. I Listen. I Say what you want about it, dude, but fucking ch -ch -ch. solid. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Can I tell a story? Yeah, sure. Um, so I also terrible at vocab, really bad at it. And so our teacher used to let us listen to music while we took the vocab test. So what I did was oh, I right. recorded myself talking the words. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I did it a few times, but then one time he just came over and he was like, oh, is that you? What? Because he was like, oh, let me hear it. I was like, ah, oh, you're not going to like it. It's like rap. You you wouldn't like it. And he's like, no, no, no. I really want to listen. And then he puts the headphone in and it's just me talking. He knew yeah. it was you. It was you, you, you being like, yo soy Chris. La biblioteca. <laughs> library. Oh, my God. So and there was then, no way for you to change the track? Like change tracks? Uh, I mean, quickly? he would have se seen it. Did you get in big trouble? Um, Not really. So he was like a really cool teacher in that. He he told me that Sold I could weed all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> he told me that I could he would pass me, but I had to get up in front of the class and use all the vocab words I cheated with and write a rap song and perform it in that front of the class. That is fucking good. Wow. And that I did that, good. and he gave me like a sixty-five or whatever passing it. Did you crush this rap song? I don't remember. I think I did though. I here's something. I I don't understand how teachers can stop people from cheating at, at this point with what iPhones can do because you can't stop kids yeah. from going to the bathroom in the middle of the test, right? Correct. And you can't force them to leave their phone. Maybe you can force them to leave their phone when they walk into the classroom. Be like before the test, everybody put your, their phones here, like a yonder bag. And that's that would be the you way you could have a burner easily. I, I, I want, yeah, that's fair. But I mean, the other piece of it is, I feel like as a teacher, you get a new crop of students every year. You get to a point where you're like, the kids that are going to try to better themselves and actually learn the shit are, are going to be the way they are. And the kids who are going to cheat and cut corners are going to be the way that they are. Right. And it's not up to me to determine who fucks their own life over in the end. Because the kids who didn't learn it... <laughs> Here, I, like th that is also very black and white way to look at it, dude. But 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 like I have, I, you I've turned out to be an okay adult. I'm not saying that you were <laughs> that. I'm not saying over. that you know your pen wiffle ball scheme <laughs> sent you on a track to, to a failure. Of crime Clearly and deceit. not. But I think that there are, you know, there are. Uh, there's much worse cheating than cheating on a spanish vocab test i'm assuming you didn't have some cheating scheme for all the tests you ever took right, right um right. and so but there are kids that are that are just never gonna they're just bad apples they're just that that's their There's only recourse yeah. and if you're a teacher it would be exhausting to try to constantly keep an eye on the the two or three bad apples in the class and make sure they didn't step yeah. out of line to the detriment of the other students right so um instead of focusing all your attention on them you just say like ah, Let them crash they're, they don't realize it but they're only hurting themselves mm. um i'm aware of what's going on and i'm i'm it's not for me like no. uh, i'm not god right, right? <clears throat> um ryan what's up yeah share a shooting story and then i want to do an email then we can bring it home so i don't know if this is fucked up or not but at ccd Right before confirmation. What's that? Um, the God. It's religious, religious school. Oh. So right before confirmation. Like Hebrew school. 
for Christians? Yeah. How long do you go? From maybe first grade all the way through eighth grade. How often? Once a week. Did you do it too, Chris? For how many hours? One to maybe between one and three. I don't really remember. Is it Let's Bible it study stuff? Yeah, Bible study stuff. Okay. So we had to take an exam in eighth grade before we could get confirmed. We had the, the written exam, and then you had to meet with the priest. And so for the written exam part, it was on a Scantron, and it was probably 50 questions. It was a lot of questions. And there's this kid that sat next to me, and he was always cheating off of me. And we, I didn't like him because we played baseball together, and he was always a dick. And I knew this test was very important. And this is very <laughs> cynical. By the way, that's as mean as Ryan's ever going to get. <laughs> Sorry, keep going. You, you might think otherwise after I finish. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to like tell on him for cheating, but I knew that he was always looking over at me. And so for this final exam, I decided to fill out my information, uh, the answers that I thought were correct inside the booklet, and then I would put an incorrect answer on purpose on the Scantron. And I let it kind of peek out a little bit to the left so that he had a good view of it. And I could visibly see him 1 through 50 following and marking in every single answer that I had put in. So you had already, you had pre-filled out a, a incorrect I Scantron. I was do doing them right side by side. So if the correct answer was C, I would circle C in my booklet and then check off A on the Scantron. Yeah, but why, why weren't you... Were they not checking the Scantrons? So what happened was... How did you not... Yeah. yeah. So when I was finished and he was finished, I was looking through the booklet and pretending to, you know, pretending like I was checking my answers and everything like that. He went up and submitted his Scantron. Uh, and then I went up and I said, excuse me, I think I made too many smudges on my Scantron. Can I have another one so I can transfer oh it over? Oh my God, savage. Nice. <laughs> savage. Excellent, Ryan. Savage. This is what we like. And That is really good. I, I don't know what happened. Not my problem. That kid's going to hell. Yeah. But <laughs> I felt very satisfied. Satisfied, as you should. Dude, that's really solid. That's great. That that's is really, really good, Ryan. You can't keep a good man down. Yeah. <laughs> you can't keep a good man down. I mean. That's really good, dude. Now, what... what what happens once you've done the test? Is you get confirmed? You get to do your confirmation. Yes. And if you fail the test, do you not get to do your confirmation? I'm sure this person got the opportunity to make it up, but it was strongly said throughout the entire final year that you need to focus on this test. You can't mess it up. And it was just kind of set in our minds that there was no, uh, you could not fail this test. It was, it was like, if you don't fail, the, if you fail this test, you're not going to get confirmed. That was the and expectation that was set amongst you have everybody. To try again. Uh -huh. Yeah. 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 It's kind of like the driver's the test. Driver's test. Yeah. Could you take sample CCD tests online? I don't think so. I to don't prepare? Think. I didn't get confirmed. No. We just had to study our, our booklets and stuff. Man. Crazy. I got to tell you. I just, uh, I, from first to eighth grade, if you had. If my parents had said you have to do an hour, one to three hours of theology, additional theology work per week, I would have had a really hard time doing it. I would have, I, I would have, have not well. been able to get through that. That would have been difficult. I really, I mean, how did you guys, did you stick with it all the way through eighth grade? Yeah, that's just what you do. Everybody does it, you know? You just suck it up and you just do it because there's no other way, you know? Eight years? Yeah. Three hours a week? Yeah, I don't know if it was three. Maybe like one and a half, two, maybe. I got to be honest. It, can't, it couldn't have been that hard, right? No, it wasn't. It's you get to like, hang out with your friends. Yeah. No one really pays attention, but it's... You kind of commiserate together that you yeah. have to do this. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, great. That's hard. But you live in your parents' house and you do what they you do say. what they want. Yeah. So, okay, you know, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um. Okay. Want to do this email? Yes. Okay. So I think this is this falls nicely in line in in a way with sort of the stuff that we talked about in the last episode. So I think you guys will like this one. Um. Hey guys. Whenever I find myself in an awkward social scenario, I think of you. Here's one from the weekend. <clears throat> 
<laughs> it's true, right? Back in January, my wife and I decided to take a uh, decided to take a decided to plan a weekend getaway in February to a popular party city. We asked a couple that we're friends with if they'd be interested in coming. They took their time being noncommittal until finally we told them we wanted an answer so we could decide on a place to book. They said they were in, so I sent a few Airbnb links to the group chat and we all decided on one. It wasn't a crazy luxurious place, but it was like a four-figure sum of money for the weekend. I booked it and paid entirely up front, figuring that they would pay their half later on. The trip was this past weekend. We all had an awesome time, but there was never any indication that they were going to pay their part. Not wanting to create an awkward rift at the start of the trip, I didn't even mention anything and hope they'd just square up at the end. Didn't happen. Expenses during the trip, meals, dinner, drinks, splits, uh, everything was pretty evenly split. At the outset, I never specifically stated that we would split the bill, but figured that since we waited for them to book the place, made the Airbnb decision collaboratively, and got a bigger space than we would have otherwise, that it was apparent we would split the bill. Am I wrong for assuming we would split? Should I feel bad asking them for cash now? What is the best course of action from here? Yeah, you got to ask. I think it's yeah. lodging on a trip. Yeah, yeah. I don't I mean what on earth would make them other couple think that that was included for them? Yeah. It's not like, you know. Totally. To avoid this in the future, there's a way to sort of be clear about it at the beginning. Be like, "Are you cool with this?" And then I'll, then we'll pay and we'll Venmo you at the end. Ne and there's no question. Yeah. Another way is to include the other people about the lodging you're considering booking. Which is what he did, though. He said, I think we should stay here. No, he said, he said, we decided we made the Airbnb decision collaboratively. And once they agreed on the weekend and they, they he sent them a bunch of links for different places. Then I would bet that the other couple's just waiting to be told right. how, what they right. owe. That's possible. I think this guy has thought himself into a tizzy which this is a lesson to be learned like don't be in the position where someone has to ask you just like be upfront with it like there's nothing fucking annoys me more than when i go to dinner, lunch with people and i'm like they're like I'll, i'm like i'll put on my car just Venmo me and i request them and th like that's annoying to have to request somebody yeah. and when they don't do it immediately i'm annoyed if you wait one hour i find that annoying people do it immediately people live in two camps on this what do people think? Well, there's two camps on this. What's the other camp? I'm in your camp. Settle Pay up fast. immediately. Don't make people feel uncomfortable. Don't yeah. chase people for it. Don't make people chase you. Um, but there are people who uh, wait a long time. But why? And they kind of keep this loose ledger in their heads of what they owe or what, you know, from different things. And then the next time that you're with that person... If there's something, they might be like, oh, yeah, I got this. You got that thing two, three that. weeks ago. But I have to, I have dear friends like that, and they they live that way, and they're okay with it. So there's one thing. So that's fine, but as long as we've agreed that we're going to do it that way. I got this one. I got this one means you'll get the next one. I'll Venmo you does not mean you'll get the next one. Right. You know? Right. I think the key is you need to be consistent with whatever way you're gonna do it i just think you need to communicate because you do of course you have to be consistent but like i don't know what your way is right. i'm paying the fucking thing we're a group why am i paying 500 dollars for the group right. and you're just not gonna like everyone else is paying me you're not gonna pay like what the fuck is that yeah you know i mean it makes it so much more complicated it's one thing if like you we go to dinner and i get it and and you're like i'll get the next one right done right i i am still owed for our telluride trip Really? And I know my buddies wouldn't have a problem with me talking about this because uh, there's two issues. One is um, the two guys that I was with are both just like, they're very generous guys. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time, and this is where it gets murky, mm -hmm. they will cover things that are expensive and then not ask anyone to pay. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, you know it's neglect or not what who knows it's just they're, they're, it doesn't even they're not even thinking about it and then you are troubled to ask them to reimburse you for things you've covered because they've covered because you're like well i remember when we would did this like that must have caught i don't even know what that yeah, cost yeah. but they never asked me to pay i i you know they did it never came up whatever um and on this trip 
you know, we went to a dinner where one of my friends, one of my buddies, is he's really into wine. His family's got a winery. They're amazing. And he took the reins on the wine ordering. Uh, I know the story, I think. And <laughs> you didn't tell him the pod though. Yeah. We he took the reins on the I just took the wine list at this really fancy restaurant we were at and was like ordering bottles and asking the sommelier questions to the extent where like he had established himself very clearly in the eyes of the sommelier as a person in the know because he the, you know he sells wine for his family's wine company mm -hmm. and so he knows wine lists and he knows all that and he was just choosing and we were like dude run the show yeah but he ran the show his way which meant that the price points were far higher than but did you say run the show to him? We said, dude, do your thing. And he, no, he's aware enough, I'm sure, to know that if he's going to ask people to split the wine bill, then he's going to okay the, the prices of each bottle bef with the table before. Yeah, you need to. You need with, to be like, it yeah. is because like, if you guys don't give me a price range, I will go overboard. Yeah. You need to say that. And he went his, he went dark. <laughs> he went rogue. He went rogue. <laughs> and he was like, we're having this. Then it was like, we're going to have, have this bottle next. And we were like, hmm, sounds good. And at the end of the meal, he immediately, the waiter came over and he was like, put all of the alcohol on this card. He said that? Yeah. Solid. And just, just took it. Solid. And then we were like, all right, dude, well, we'll, I mean, we'll get your dinner, you know? Yeah. And we did. And that was fine. We don't know. I mean, I do know what he spent on the wine. We kind of like pieced it together. But I mean, he spent so much more mm -hmm. than we did on the dinner now. And it was amazing. Yeah. But here's the issue. He owes me like $450 for the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And compared to what he spent on wine at that dinner, it's like, and I feel ridiculous but, asking him for it. However, they're just not the same thing. I, I kind of agree. They're just not the same thing. And if he wasn't there, you wouldn't have gotten that kind of wine. The, uh, Very nice of him to do it. Yeah. But like you'd prefer having the part or the Airbnb split and as opposed to having I'll a night of wine tasting. Drink Capri Suns. <laughs> the other problem is that the other buddy is owed much more than me. And he's oh. not pushing for it. Oh yeah. And the lack of a united front for settling up, especially with me being the one looking to collect crumbs mm. on the dollar here, is making me feel pathetic and annoying. But yeah, like so th there the are four hundred fifty dollars is a lot of money to me. I, I need, I want that money. So this is the this is the thing. So back to our the the email. Sometimes there are times where. If you don't communicate properly at the beginning, the right play is to let it go. And to avoid yeah. and, and I'm not saying that is necessarily the right play in your situation, but you might end up deciding that the move for you in this situation is to let it go. You might decide that. You might do it begrudgingly. You might do it with a smile on your face. I don't know how you'll get there or if you even will have to get there. But by communicating up front very clearly, doesn't have to be annoying or anal of you, you can completely avoid getting into the situation next time. That's what I say to you. And it might not, it, there was no way to do that for you, mm -hmm. but as, in, as a general rule, you know what I mean? My problem is that I cannot afford right now to get boned. Whereas there are times in my life where I can. Mm. And yet, if that's the case, I am being inconsistent with my collections. So what are you going to do? I'm going to send one more text. Have you sent texts already? Yes. How many? We touched on it two days after we got home. And I he was like, another, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, yep, absolutely. Sounds good. And then the other guy was like, yeah, let me just check when I get home. Mm. And then I didn't hear anything for another week or two. And then I sent another follow-up text and it was like sort of same deal. And now we're just in a place where... Mm. And by the way, not for nothing, <laughs> I have a... An absolutely uh, photographic recall of all of the money that is owed to me. Outstanding. Mm. I know that. I know that. I know, I know that feeling. 
bets specifically that were that were wagered you know as a joke uh that i won that nobody paid me for which by the way i paid you for our joke bet on the air do you remember that what 20 bucks that? if you could name five winter olympics that's right you I, did. I promptly paid that one yeah yeah, I smoked. Um, I smoked that. Sorry, sorry to no. give myself a pat on the back. No, it's good, your... dude. I'm with you, man. If I'm, if I, if I, if, if you go through the fucking rigmarole of pitching a bet and shaking hands on it, or being like bet, yeah, and then you don't pay, yeah, okay. what's the point? We're good about money. We live in a society in, in this capacity. It it the 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 fabric comes apart at the seams if people do not honor their bets. I know. I know. Yeah, we're good about money. We're very good about money. You gotta be. It just makes it weird for no reason. Yeah. Now, the last piece, the guy who owes me four hundred and fifty dollars mm-hmm. against all odds, I don't even know how this happened. His credit card ended up in my wallet. <laughs> And I said to him, why don't you just let me go have a day at Moncler? And he was like, Ha ha, have at it. And you know, I guess uh, that's w- with interest accruing. Is that or is that what's actually going to happen? It could. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It could. We'll see. We'll Hilarious. see. Um, all right, all right. Oops, the podcast, everybody. City Winery, Boston, March twenty fourth. Don't you forget to get your tickets. Tickets at francisells dot com. Also on the City Winery website and Oops, the podcast and my website. Yep. Check them out. Last thing, um, I'm at Gotham Comedy Club, April 8th and 9th. My big shows. I hope you guys will come out to that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Big meet and greet, fun party, etc. See you there.